The galaxies in the universe are grouped into a complex spatial pattern spanning scales of millions to hundreds of millions of light years. Because of the way it looks, this pattern is often referred to as the cosmic web. This structure consists of elongated filaments and flattened walls that surround large, nearly empty voids. At the nodes of the web, we find dense and compact clusters, agglomerates of thousands of galaxies. Over the past decade, the Sloan Digital Sky Survey has created a map of a large region of the nearby universe that reaches out to distances of hundreds of millions of light years. The map consists of about a million galaxies. In the coming few minutes, we are going to take you on a journey showing how geometry and topology are opening up a new view of the cosmic web, how we can describe these structures in terms of tessellations from Delaunay triangulations to their dual Voronoi diagrams, providing new and profound insights into the structure and evolution of this complex pattern, the cosmic web. In this story, we combine the efforts of mathematicians and computer scientists connected to SIGAL, the Computational Geometry Algorithm Library, with those of astronomers and cosmologists who have learned since the SDSS mapping survey about the existence of the intricate structure in which matter and galaxies have woven themselves. We will first address the question of how the web-like structure arose out of the primordial universe. This happened over 13.7 billion years of cosmic evolution. Under the gravitational influence of the inhomogeneous mass distribution, the tiny perturbations in the primordial density field start to grow. Matter starts to migrate towards the higher density regions. Meanwhile, it evacuates the regions of lower gravitational attraction to form the low density regions. In a surprisingly accurate first order approximation, the resulting displacement of each mass element in the density field can be described by simple ballistic motion. This takes it from its original position, labeled q, to a location x at time t by means of a constant velocity u, as seen in this equation. The velocity, u, is the gradient of the potential field, phi, which in turn is fully determined by the initial field of density fluctuations. This is known as the Zeldovich approximation. It predicts the formation of a network of sheets and filaments. The physical meaning of the Zeldovich approximation is clearer when turning to the corresponding equation of motion, i.e., the Euler equation. The fact that the Euler equation lacks a gravitational source term directly hints at its limitation. The lack of self-gravity means that the emerging sheets and filaments are unable to stop the inflowing mass elements. An elegant extension of the Zeldovich approximation overcomes a lack of self-gravity. Gorbatov, Saichev, and Shandarin achieved this by simulating the effects of self-gravity with an artificial viscosity. The viscosity term is added as a source term to the Euler equation. The effect of the viscosity term is that it makes the matter sticky. As soon as matter streams reach walls and filaments, their inflow motion comes to a halt. After this, they pursue their movement within these structures, hence the name of the formalism, the adhesion model. The adhesion equation is a well-known partial differential equation in fluid mechanics, where it goes by the name of Berger's equation. The Berger's equation has an exact and elegant solution. In the limit where the viscosity term goes to zero, the solution of the evolving potential was given by Hopf in 1950. The global optimization induces a mapping of the primordial mass distribution in the so-called Lagrangian space, Q, to the evolving density field in Eulerian space, X. It describes how a mass element Q moves towards its location X at time T. Assessing this expression more closely, one may find that the solution follows from the geometric evaluation of the convex hull of the initial potential field, augmented by a quadratic term. We came to the realization that this solution, the convex hull, can be straightforwardly found by computing the weighted Voronoi diagram of a mesh weighted by the value of the potential. By projecting the convex hull back on Lagrangian space, we find a weighted Delaunay triangulation that tessellates the corresponding volume of the primordial mass distribution. And the simplices of the resulting Delaunay triangulation can be directly identified with corresponding elements of the dual Voronoi diagram in Eulerian space. We can now distinguish the various morphological elements in the emerging mass distribution. The nodes may be identified with the compact and dense clusters of the cosmic web. 
Groups of expanding Voronoi cells combine into prominent underdense voids. Finally, we find that segments aggregate into elongated alleys, which would be recognized as the filaments of the web-like network. Now we are ready to identify elements of the cosmic web by analyzing the corresponding features in the Deloney triangulation. As a particle trajectory leads into a gravitationally collapsed structure, it becomes redundant, adding mass to the structure. Therefore, the area of a Deloney face gives the total mass accumulated onto a node in the Voronoi diagram. Using the length of the Deloney edges as a benchmark, we can identify three classes of faces in the triangulation. Small faces correspond to points lying in voids. Lenticular faces, now shown in yellow, outline the filaments. Again, longer Deloney edges make denser filaments. Finally, the more equilateral faces show us where to find clusters. We have made the area of the red circles in the Voronoi diagram proportional to their mass. Now we know how to compute properties of the cosmic web directly from the initial potential. What will happen if we start to change these initial conditions? How is this change reflected in the connectivity of the web? Decreasing the relative importance of large-scale modes brings us to a more regular structure. Voids seem less elongated as the long-distance tidal forces that shaped them diminish. The change in character persists from the largest down to the very smallest scales. In the past few minutes, we have made a long journey. We have shown that geometry is a deep and integral part of our understanding of the infrastructure of our universe. The beauty and intricacy of the cosmic web form a treasure trove of information on the nature and origin of our universe. The key to this treasure is nothing less than geometry. The geometry of tessellations, convex hulls, simplices and vertices, computational geometry.